Whether you're a devout vegan or a carnivore that likes to graze on the green side, vegetables need no longer be a mere side dish, but should be celebrated in all their glory. The key to preparing such beautiful ingredients is to immerse yourself mind, body and soul. After all, Buddhist monks have been doing this for millennia. In this episode, we'll be looking at some traditional cooking methods, including a quick stir fry to lock in all the vegetable goodness. Let's kick off with a soup which my dad made famous here in Leicester, Charlie's hot and sour soup. Next up is the cauliflower yuk sun, served in an ice cold lettuce leaf and topped with crisp vermicelli and creamy cashew nuts. And to finish, we take a look at the spicy cousin to sweet and sour, the rule breaker, my spicy Kung Po tofu. If you're craving a soup that's tangy, spicy and crunchy, let me introduce you to Charlie's vegetarian hot and sour soup. So who is Charlie? He was an odd little five foot nothing Chinese man with a heart of gold and the most talented chef I have ever met and the head chef at the Bamboo House, dad's very first Cantonese restaurant. I'm a carnivore through and through. Um, so for me, this dish has to have texture and this is what we're doing. So you can probably see, um, I've been busy in the kitchen already prepping all of my ingredients, which I will go through with you in a second. Um, and it's all about getting those different mouth sensations. So this tofu, this is the medium firm, and you can see that it's silky and it's smooth, uh, a little bit different to the firm tofu that we normally use. Um, so when we're eating this soup, it just creates that different mouth feel. And I'm gonna take my time, but this is delicate. This is gonna go in at the very, very end. Um, if you put it in any earlier, it breaks up and becomes a bit of a tofu scrambled egg. So, tofu. The next ingredient is funky and you're gonna love it. So, this is my Chinese wood ear mushrooms. And um, you don't buy it looking like this. And it is a mushroom, uh, it's really, I'd say crispy, so not crunchy, but actually crispy. So when you bite into it, it actually snaps in the mouth. When you buy it, it looks like this. It's in a plastic packet and it's just on the shelf in a Chinese or Oriental supermarket. And you buy quite a big packet. And literally this little piece here turns into this massive piece here. So this is just reconstituted in hot water. Okay, so, but it's so important that if you can source this, it makes all the difference in the soup. Now, I find that there's a bit of a lumpy bit or a, this is probably where the stem of the mushroom is. So I'm just gonna chop that piece out and then the rest of it, I'm gonna chop into bite-sized slithers. So when I pick it up on my Chinese spoon, I wanna make sure that all the ingredients are small, are small enough so I can actually pick them up and eat them. So I'm gonna chop two or three of these pieces uh, my stock is already boiling, it's on low already, just to save a bit of time. And again, I just chop out this stem. So this is quite hard. It's not very nice to eat, I don't think, but, but you don't have to chop it out. I do know people that um, do eat it. So let's start cooking. So I'm gonna bring my soup up to quite a rolling boil. And to this, we're just gonna start off with adding our vegetables. So we got, we've got small slithers of carrots. Again, this is just gonna add that crunch. I'm gonna work quite quickly because this only needs two or three minutes to cook. So in go my carrots, followed by my bamboo shoots, which are soft and juicy. Um, chili, this is hot and sour soup. So in goes my chili. And now I'm gonna pop in my wood ear mushroom. Remember, the tofu goes in at the end, as do the peas. We don't want to add the peas too early because they go brown or yellow. So I want to try and keep that vibrant green color just by adding towards the end. Now, let's add in the dries, sugar. So hot and sour needs to be balanced with a little bit of sweetness. And I'm going to put in, what, three good pinches of sugar, which will make all the difference, followed by a pinch of salt, and again, this is um, rock salt, but you can use any salt that you've got. For the background heat, and I know there's chili in it already, but we're gonna add some white pepper for that smooth heat. Now, 
tomato ketchup, standard tomato ketchup, any brand you use. Let's get that in, that's that tartness. We have some tomato puree, again, just to elevate that tomato flavor. I have some light soy sauce for that umami and a little bit of saltiness, and we have added salt, but this is just gonna help. Rice vinegar. You can use white vinegar, and you may even get away with cider vinegar, but this is rice vinegar. And then, for the last of the wets, a little bit of dark soy sauce, and this is just gonna help give it a deeper color, make it richer. Remember, we eat with our eyes. So, let's bring that up to a hard boil. Now, just before I thicken and add my tofu, I'm just gonna give this a quick try, just to make sure we get that we've got those flavors right. Now, for me, that's perfect. I like my soup quite tangy. So I've got that tomato coming through, but that vinegar. So I'm going to thicken with my cornflour water. And I've just massaged that together again because it does tend to set at the bottom once it's been standing for a little while. And I'm gonna add enough to be thick double cream, I guess is probably the texture we're looking for. Let's turn this heat back up again. Now for my peas. And these are only gonna be warmed through. I'll switch the heat off. Now I'm gonna add probably half of my tofu to the soup. A very gentle stir. Not forgetting the sesame oil. This is really important because this, this adds that nutty note. So a little bit of sesame oil. Let's just switch the heat off. Anybody that's been to a Chinese restaurant would know that egg is normally served in this dish. I remember this is vegetarian vegan. What no meat is all about vegetarian vegan. So I'm going to serve up a vegan version first. So I just wanna make sure that I get a bit of everything. So I've got a, bit of, a little bit of tofu, carrot, bamboo shoots, that crispy wood ear mushroom. Now, that's my vegan version. I'm just gonna pop in a couple of pieces of tofu on the top. Now, heat goes back on just for a second. Now, once this comes back up to a little boil, we'll add the egg. Now, this is, you know, a lot of Chinese restaurants, um, it's known as egg drop. And this just adds, again, that different texture, a different mouth sensation as we're eating it, as we're getting those flecks of egg through the soup. Right, my soup is back up to the boil. I'm just gonna grab this egg. There are two eggs in here. I'm only gonna use half of this maybe. And as I drop it in from a great height, I'm gonna swirl the egg through and it cooks immediately as it hits the hot soup. Okay, heat goes off. And I just mop up any spillage. Now you can see the difference straight away. Now this is probably what you'll recognize when you go to a Chinese restaurant or a takeaway that it's got egg in. And you know what? I'm just gonna give it a little flourish. A sesame oil. This is Charlie's hot and sour soup. When I talk to my dad, it's amazing because my dad's face lights up because he was so proud that he'd, that he'd you know, asked Charlie to come all the way from London and come and cook at his restaurant, the first Cantonese restaurant in Leicester. Uh, and people would travel from far and wide just to come and have this soup because in, unless you were eating in London, you couldn't get this dish. Um, so for me, there's a lot of nostalgia in this one little dish. There you go, you got emotion in that one as well. Nice 
I've given this Chinese restaurant favorite a vegetarian makeover. Say hey to my cauliflower yuk sung. Served on a crisp lettuce leaf and garnished with fried vermicelli and creamy cashews. So these little bits of plastic are actually rice noodles. Uh, they've been made, they've been dried out and they've been packaged into little rice bundles like this. Now this is that white stuff that gets served on top of the yuk sung. Uh, it's like, um, I suppose, Chinese crisps in a, in a sense, or like a stringy prawn cracker. Right then, so I'm gonna take a pinch. Now, you've gotta be careful you don't put too much of this in at the same time, because it puffs up really quickly. And I sprinkle this in. Give it a quick flip over just to make sure that it's cooked both sides. And then out it comes. And there's my fried vermicelli. So I do a couple of batches of these. Just trying to fish it out as well. Cause like I said, I don't really want to leave bits in there cause it starts to go brown very quickly. So I'll pop that to one side cause I won't use that bit. I get another pinch and in that goes and straight away out it comes. I'll switch off my wok and I'll just pop this over to one side. Right, let's grab my wok and we'll get that on straight away. Right, let's add in a squirt of oil and I'm going to pop in my onions first of all. So I've got some nice diced onion, nice and fine, followed by some celery. And now I can get the aromats in. So first aromat is going to be my ginger. And this has just been minced down. This is gonna give it that background heat. And it's those classic Cantonese flavors. This is a Cantonese dish. Some minced garlic. And the reason I put the onion and the celery in first was because I probably needed to ensure that I didn't burn these aromats. Some spring onion. Now you can reserve some of this at the end. I like my spring onion cooked, so I'm gonna put all of it in. Now this is cauliflower yuk sung. So let's think about getting our cauliflower in now, which is just here. Now there's quite a lot here, so I'm probably gonna use one, two, three big handfuls should be plenty for this serving. In fact, I'm gonna put a little bit more in. And let's just give this a quick toss. And you can see that my onions are picking up a little bit of color. So there's that caramelization that we talk about all the time. Now let's inject a little bit more color into this. So I have some diced carrot. In they go. And to offer that crunch and that fresh, sort of like a um, Chinese, it's a very much a Chinese flavor water chestnuts. But you know, so we've got some diced water chestnuts in there. Instantly you'll be transported into a far off East Asian destination of your choice. Now this dish is completely vegetarian and vegan. So if you think you're lacking because you've decided to cut out meat, then how wrong you are. Because we've got crunchy vegetables, we've got crunchy carrots and celery, we've got the creamy creaminess from the cauliflower. We've got that fresh water chestnut taste. Then we've got those aromats. And this is a really lovely alternative or pimping up of your, you know, chicken yuk sung that you might have before. Those, the cauliflower just adds that texture and that flavor. Okay, so that's coming along nicely. So I'm gonna get my dries in next. Um, which is just sugar. Now this dish loves a little bit of sweetness because of the garlic and ginger and spring onion. So I'm just gonna add some sugar for that sweetness. And this is followed by my mushroom stir fry sauce. Now, if you can't buy mushroom stir fry sauce, you can 
you can make it at home, which is made with blended um, seaweed. Uh, but you should be able to pick this up. I think most places now sell an alternative to the oyster sauce. If you're a meat eater and you don't mind using the oyster sauce, by all means use your oyster sauce rather than the mushroom stir fry sauce. Now we're going to pop in my dark soy sauce. This is going to help with the colour, a little bit more sweetness and that background umami flavour. And you can see straight away that dish has changed colour. So that's well incorporated. And finally, and the reason I've left this to the end is because I want that pungent fermented wine taste. And this is my Chinese rice wine that goes in at the very last second and the heat goes off and straight away that dish is just changed. It's just come to life. Sesame oil. There's a little squirt goes in there. Grab my serving bowl. This smells fantastic. And that, just by adding that rice wine just at the very, very end, it makes the dish instantly come to life. And that's the last of my filling. This, of course, has to be topped with some creamy cashew nuts. So on they go. And there we have it, my cauliflower yuksung with all its wondrous vegetables, completely vegetarian and vegan, topped with creamy cashew nuts. Now on to serve in my lettuce leaf. Now, if you struggle to get a whole lettuce leaf off your iceberg, this is how I did mine. For this one, guys, under a steady stream of cold water, gently caress the outer lettuce leaf, allowing the water to fill the leaf until it naturally pulls away from the rest of the head. So we're gonna take Big heap of this cauliflower mixture. I'm gonna grab a few more cashew nuts. And then obviously you can't forget to top it with this crispy vermicelli noodle. And the last thing we do is we bundle it in, open the mouth nice and wide, and we take the largest mouthful you've ever seen. Hmm. There's something quite special about this hot, spicy, sweet and sour dish that has everybody drooling at the mere hint of Kung Po. This tofu variation ticks all the boxes and more on flavour and texture. A bit of a rule breaker, but it works. I've been cooking this dish far longer than I care to remember and it still brings smiles to people's faces. So I have most of my ingredients ready. Just got to chop these peppers into cubes, which we'll do just quickly. I only need half of this one and half an onion. So I'm just going to take the root off and then I'm, roughly I'm going to chop them into the same size as my peppers. And lastly, and I am going to wash my hands afterwards because I always rub my eyes, I just need to chop some fresh green chilli. So it's quite a large one this one, so I may only use half. Which should be fine. I'll just give my hands a rinse. Otherwise, I will be regretting this in a second. So. My wok was on, just on low, so it should be nice and warm already. A little bit of vegetable oil. So just a squirt. And we'll start off by caramelizing our onions and pepper. So they can go in first. Just 
So, what's so special about this dish? Well, you tell me. It just seems that every single takeaway that I've ever worked in and restaurant, this was the dish that was ordered week in, week out, every night. And it's one of the most requested that I get asked to demo if I'm doing my live shows and stuff. So, and we have some bamboo shoots, which are pre-sliced. They can go in and some water chestnuts. There's quite a lot there. So I probably use about half of that just to add a bit of crunch as we're eating this. Now the veggies don't take very long to soften. And I just want to try and get a little bit of color on them just to inject that little bit of flavor. Now, this is a sweet dish. I mean, it's hot and sour, but it's, um, it's very similar to a sweet and sour. So I'm just gonna add some sugar To balance out the sugar, I'm going to add some vinegar. Then we want that tartness, so good old tomato ketchup or tomato sauce and some tomato puree. And we can't forget the hoisin. The hoisin is going to give it that five spice Chinese aromatic flavour that we know and love about this dish. So my sauce is quite thick already. If you do like a saucier dish, you can just pimp it. You can, you can add a little bit more ketchup and a few more ingredients. But this is fine. So I'm not going to need to thicken. And the last thing to go in is the star ingredients. Now to achieve maximum crispiness on our tofu, um, I just literally coated these in corn flour and popped them in some hot oil and drained them. So these are like super crispy and I'm just going to warm this through in the sauce and just make sure that all of it or every single piece of this ingredient is coated. In go my chilies. There are my chilies. Okay, heat goes off. A quick skirt, squirt of sesame oil. Okay, I just need to grab my cashews. They can go there. This is my nice earthenware. Now that was how simple Kung Po is to make. Obviously this is topped with crunchy, creamy cashew nuts as always. And I like to give these just a little bit of a crunch first. So this may look like sweet and sour. It may smell ever so slightly like sweet and sour, but oh my goodness, take one bite of this and we know that we've gone over to the dark side. This is my Kung Po tofu. Go and give it a go guys. Mm, that's lovely. And there we have it. My nod to grazing on the green side and the celebration of the humble veggies in all their wonderful glory. Wok, no meat? Yes, really.